So thanks for coming. So I'm a researcher, but I, I will introduce you to Peer Community In, which is a free mean for recommendation process of unpublished scientific papers based on peer reviews. So before, before giving you details on the project, I would like to give you some slides about the scientific publication. So what, what is the value of publishing scientific articles? Why do we publish? We, actually, we publish to make science, to make our results public. We publish to ensure the quality of science because there is peer review. This defines anteriority of results and that makes articles searchable and findable on the internet. This is quite an inefficient system. We all know that we are, when, once we have manuscript, we submit, there is rejection, we resubmit rejection in cascade. So it can take up to six months a year, sometimes more time to publish our papers. And this is a vicious system because every accepted article contributes to the publisher turnover and researchers are evaluated on their ability to publish. You know, you all know publish or perish. So for the publisher, the more article he publish, the more money he's making. And for researchers, the more paper you publish. So the, mo the best it is for your career. So there is a kind of conjunction of interest between researchers and publisher. And this is not good for quality because it's, this is a kind of snowball effect. The publication system is quite expensive and it is owned by six big publishers. I guess you all know Elsevier, Springer Nature, Wiley. So there is also Thomson Reuters, Kluver and Informa. And if you take the six big publishers, <clears throat> they hold 38% of the market. And they publish more than 50% of the scientific publications. So this is expensive, why? Because we are paying as readers, there is a subscription, and we are paying as author if we want to publish in open access. So we are paying twice to consult, to read articles, and to publish. So I don't know, have you an idea about here or at CS, CSIC how much, how much you pay per year for, as a subscription? Yeah. No idea for that? The evaluation from, for the French university is 70 million euro per year. So it includes subscription and it, it includes the APC, so paying charge for author. And the point is that the fees are increasing. There is a plus 20% between 2004 and 2007. And here you can see the last, so between 2011, no, 2011 and 2015, so there is a huge rise of the turnover of the big six company. The point is, it's not only expensive, but they are making a lot of money, a lot of margin. Here is the turnover of the company. For example, if you take Elsevier, they, are, they have a turnover of almost $3 billion per year. But they are making one billion margin profit per year. That's a lot. And if you take the mean profit margin, it is almost 40%. I don't know if you realize it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. We are paying too much, definitely. And not only they are making money, but what they are doing with the money, we are mostly giving to the shareholder. Because if you look at here, the investment of the companies in the publication system, it remains exactly the same, but they are increasing the margin. So most of the margin is given to the shareholder per year. So the scientific publishing system on the internet, we can change it. Why? Because there is a very low publishing cost. If you take archive or bioarchive, it costs less than $7 to publish an article on the internet. And now there is free tools available. I don't know here, does some of you put preprints on bioarchive or archive? None of you? Have you an idea about what is a pre preprint on bioarchive or archive? Yes, almost, no, not, not all of you. So a preprint, what, what I mean a preprint is an unpublished paper. <clears throat> so you put it on a server 
assistance. So it's not a publication per se, like in a journal, but it's a complete article you are putting on open archive. And when you put this on open archive, it is free for readers. Everybody can read it for free. So step by step, biologists like physics before, because physicians, they put a lot of paper in archive like mathematicians, but step by step biologists, they are doing exactly the same using bioarchive. If you see this, this is a number of preprint in open archive and in green, this is a number of paper preprints in bioarchive. So it's a very huge deposit of preprints in bioarchive. So why people are doing this? Because it makes science available immediately. And they can have comments and social networks. So if I go back to the classical scientific publication, I told you that it makes science public. This is why we are publishing. But there is no need. Publication can be directly posted on the internet. It is costly, as I told you, but there is no need. We do almost everything and there is a low cost of publication via open archive. It ensures quality. This is not true. There is vices and the evaluation, the peer review is sometimes black box evaluations. It defines anteriority, but this is true for open archive. And it makes searchable, findable, but it is also true for open archive. So why preprints are good? They are good because they are free for author. When you deposit a pa paper in bioarchive, it is free. They don't ask money for that. And it is free also for readers. It gives your manuscript, your manuscript available immediately, and there is a proof of anteriority, and it is searchable and findable. But the point, the big point, is a quality problem, because these preprints are not evaluated. They are just deposited <coughs> in open archive. So there is no formal evaluation, there is no peer review. So everything can be found in bioarchive, in archive, including very bad quality preprints. So what we need actually is a preprint evaluation. And this evaluation could be disconnected from publication. We will see this. Evaluation could be disconnected from the market. It will be better for the quality. And we can organize ourselves the evaluation. And this is what we propose to do with the peer community in PCI project. So what is the goal of PCI? <clears throat> the goal is to create several communities of researchers evaluating through peer review and recommending, <coughs> highlighting articles in their scientific field. So we will see that we have a PCI in ecology, we have now a PCI in evolutionary biology, in paleontology, and we can imagine as much as many PCI as possible. It can cover every field. So we recommend articles, and it is mostly preprints. So this is paper not published in journals. But we can also highlight postprints, like F1000, you know, I guess several of you know F1000. So we can also highlight postprints, which means articles already published in scientific journals. I will give you the details on how does it work. So imagine you are all writing papers and you are pr quite proud of your manuscript and instead of, or before, we will talk about that, before submitting it to a journal, you deposit it as a, in a preprint server like bioarchive or archive. So this will be the V1, the version one of your paper. Once you have deposited it in bioarchive, <laughs> you can submit it to PCI. You don't download it in PCI website. You just indicate the DOI, because when you deposit your preprint in BioArchive, you receive a DOI. So you indicate the DOI, the title, the author, the abstract. So you are submitting it to PCI. Once you have submitted your preprint to PCI, it could be not considered for peer review. That happened when you submit a paper to a journal, sometimes you receive a letter saying, too much paper, sorry, we cannot evaluate it. So it could be the same for PCI, that could be no editors interesting by your paper, so it could be not considered. If an editor takes your paper, it is evaluated by a peer review. And then like in classical journals, there can be three outcomes, 
it could be rejected. It could ask for revised version, or it could be recommended, meaning accepted. If you, have, if you are asked to revise your paper, what you are doing is you, you are taking into account the reviewer comments, and you deposit a second version and a third version and so far in bioarchive. So the paper remains in bioarchive. So in bioarchive, you can put several versions of your paper. <clears throat> so at the end, if it is recommended, you have the final version in bioarchive of your paper, and your paper is recommended on the PCI Evolbiol website, and there is the recommendation text, which is a kind of news and view, and the review, which are posted on PCI. And your paper on bioarchive becomes a valid and citable article. But the important point is that you can still submit it to a journal if you wish to. So what we are recommending is a version of the preprint. If I go here, for example, look at this paper recommended by Peer Community in Evolutionary Biology. We are recommending the version 4 of the paper. So here is a paper. I didn't put the title, but this is the author. There was a title, Bioarchive. This is a DOI of Bioarchive paper. And we said that we are recommending version 4. So there was four versions before being recommended. A preprint recommended by a PCI is a valid and citable article. It means that you can leave the article like this and just sit it, and so, so you have nothing to pay. You have put your, your paper in bioarchive, it is free. You have received an evaluation, it is free. Everybody can read it, so your paper is a citable reference. So what we call recommenders are equivalent to associate editors in traditional journals, and we have a large number, so now we have 370 recommenders at PCI Evolbiol, and uh, there is 320 at Ecology, PCI Ecology. For the referee, we require at least two reviewers, two referees, two reviews per, per paper, and it can be chosen within or outside the PCI. There is no need to take within the 370. If you are a recommender, Elena, for example, can ask everybody or every colleagues to evaluate a paper if she takes a paper. So actually, PCI doesn't publish the paper. The paper remains in bioarchive. But the PCI only publishes review and recommendation of preprint if recommended. This is sometimes one question is, if you review the paper, will you post the reviews on, on the internet if it is rejected? The answer is no. We only publish the review of recommended paper. If you are an author, you submit the paper. The paper is rejected. We send you the review because you, you can, so it would be useful to um, improve the quality of your paper, but we do not publish the reviews. It doesn't say, okay, this is a bad paper, here is a review. So what I try to summarize the advantages of submitting to a PCI. So if you submit before submitting a journal, you obtain two reviews of your preprint, and you can improve the quality of your preprint before submitting it to a journal. So if you have a you have good manuscript and you you want to publish it in a big journal, you can use PCI as pre-review to increase the quality. So notorious journals, I will tell you more about that, notorious journals consider PCI review as they stand and or to speed up their decisions. And you have also a signed text recommending your preprints, like a news and views, which is quite nice and could be done by highly recognized um, recommenders. So you can also submit to a PCI instead of submitting it to a journal, because your manuscript will be free for readers as an author. You keep your copyright. <coughs> you are not giving it to publishers. You have a transparent editorial process of quality, and you don't support a costly publication system. So where we are, as I told you, we have funded with Benoit Facon and Thomas Guillemot the peer community in evolutionary biology. So there is a peer community in paleontology, and there is a peer community in ecology. And we are <clears throat> probably in the next week or next month, there will be a PCI in computational statistics. And we are calling for more and more PCI. If I'm a closer look at PCI Evolbiol, so we have, we have launched the PCI Evolbiol in January 2017. 
So there is a kind of 2,000 unique visitors per month. So at the beginning, we were 162 recommenders, and then we are now in April, 374. We made 48 recommendations published so far, 24 of postprint. It was at the beginning to launch the system, but we are mostly concentrated now on recommendation of preprints. We received 61 submissions, so 24, 24 were recommended, 15 are currently under consideration, and 22 were not considered or rejected. And an important point is the mean time between submission and the first editorial decision in, is 40, 49 days. Then after, it depends on the speed at which, the time at which author put a review, submit a revised version. So it could be very quick for the end of the process, or sometimes it takes a while, depending. So if, we, if, you, if you go back to your computer and if you type PCI Evolbiol, you will see the website. So there is a button you can submit a preprint, and this is the latest recommendation. So each time there is a title of the preprint, and there is also the recommendation, and you can well. So there is a Twitter, of course. And for each recommender, there is a web, web page where you can see the recommendation. So this is Marc Robinson Rochavi, a researcher in uh, Switzerland. And so he made one recommendation and he made one review. So the page. So for, it's also interesting for recommenders because when they are evaluating, evaluated, they can say, OK, I did some editorial decision. I, I did some evaluation. And here is a web page for PCI where I of course, if he remains anonymous for one paper, he review it doesn't appear here, of course. So we received some support, 20,000 euros from INRA. We received some support from CESB, some SSC, which is the equivalent of CESB, but in the United States. And uh, this is the Société Française d'Ecologie et d'Evolution. And we received some support from laboratory and from LabEx, which is kind of laboratory of excellence, French institution. But, well, actually, we, we received some money to start the project. But it doesn't cost a lot. So what, this is one important point. As I told you before, what is the relationship between PCI Evolbiol and journals? So we have sent emails to the different editor-in-chief of these different journals. And also, some of them are recommenders. For example, Tim Coulson, he has funded PCI Ecology, and he is part also, he's a recommender of PCI Evolbiol. Dries Monte is also, and Wolf Blankenham, they are both inside PCI Evolbiol as recommender. So we, are, we were asking, we, we asked uh, all these editors in chief what they would do when they received a recommended preprint by PCI Evolbiol. And they all say, that they will take the review, have a look at the review, and if it's good enough, they will accept the paper as it stands. But they, they keep the right to, to put further reviewers on the paper, depending. So it's not a commitment to say, I receive a recommended paper and I accept right away. No. But they say it could be the case, and actually it turned it turn out that it was the case. We have example for paper submitted, recommended preprint from PCI Evolbiol, submitted to Ecology Letters and to Evolutionary Application and Evolution. They were submitted and 24 hours after they were just accepted. So PCI Ecology, as I told you, it was, so PCI Evolbiol, is, it's one year now, a bit more, 15 months. PCI Ecology and PCI Paleontology, it's quite recent. It's three months old. They were launched in January 2018. So at PCI Ecology, there is quite already a lo lot of recommenders, and we have already five preprint submissions. So there is no yet submission in PCI Paleontology. Is it started quite slowly, and but there is already 64 recommenders. It doesn't cost a lot, as I say, the economic model. It's mostly human time, mostly writing mails and mails and mails and mails. So it could be, well, not so much. And for the functioning also, it's, well, we can consider it's 5,000 euros per year for each PCI. Because we are not publishing the paper. That's the main difference between journals. 
and we are not making profit. We are a non-profit organization. We are not making money. This is my last slide. We are calling for the creation of new PCI. If you are not in the field of ecology or evolutionary biology, if you know people interested by alternative publishing system in other fields, you can, you can talk to them about PCI. Try to have as many as scientific disciplines as possible. So if somebody, somebody can choose a topic, and we think it could be highly specialized. We can imagine a PCI in medical entomology, for example. But it could be a very generalist PCI, like PCI physics, like PCI ecologies. At the beginning, we were thinking about PCI ecology may be too large, making like a PCI population ecology, or I mean, ecology in mostly pop in, in an evolution or but because there is also functional ecology, it could be a PCI in functional ecology. So we try PCI ecology, but it could be more specialized. So it means setting a managing board and bring a large number of rock models. So all proposal will be evaluated to PCI organizations just to avoid people saying, okay, now we are a PCI and we are just launching a PCI. So it's just a way to avoid fake PCI. And the founder of new PCI will benefit of a fully operational website. We can just copy past the website. It's very easy. And the logistical support for the PCI. Right. This is just a call. Stop it. Thanks.